All right, here we are. Episode 23 in series two of Seven Minutes Max. Absolutely delighted and honoured to have Steve and Josie Stevens with me all the way from Los Angeles, California. Guys, welcome and thank you so much for doing this. Uh, oh, thank pleasure. you. Yeah, thank you for having us. My pleasure. Well, I, I thought I'd give you a reason to talk to someone outside of the house because you might be going nuts. <laughs> outside of the house? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and you guys safe and well over there inside, I suppose, your own little area, your little bubble there? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, we're, uh, you know, go, doing all the guidelines and everything. Josie's actually been making masks and she's got a little business happening. Now. I do, yeah. Yeah, pink masks. Uh, well, some of them are pink. You know what? I started making them. I was donating them to hospitals and then yep. I was making some for my friends, but everybody liked them. So I started selling them. But like, I mean, some are pink, but a lot say like, fuck off or like have right. potlucks all over them. So they're kind of funny ones. And where can people get those if they want one? Right. Uh, <laughs> Josie, well, what is it? JosieStevens.BigCartel.com. Awesome. Okay. I love that. I love that. All right. I might put my own order in. That's brilliant. I want, <laughs> I want one that says fuck off on there too. Yeah. It's my favorite. I make them reversible. So if you need to like hide it real quick, they're just plain on the other side. <laughs> nice. Nice. Brilliant. Okay. Well, we know how this works. I'm going to put the timer on for seven minutes and um, uh, you've got seven random questions in seven minutes. Are you guys ready? Right ready. on. Yep. All right, let's rock and roll. And Steve, thank you so much for not having a guitar in your hand because every <laughs> guitar player I've interviewed a uh, podcast with, the boy's holding a guitar. Uh, <laughs> it's a security blanket. It's like a security, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. It's, it's, I, my, it's just my security blanket right here. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Totally, totally love it. All right, you ready, guys? Let's go. Right Start on. starts now. Okay, this is particularly to Steve. If you weren't a musician, what would you be doing? Wow. Well, well, my only other legitimate job I had was working at Teen Form Bras, which were training bras. I kid you <laughs> not, it's, this is real. So I would have worked my way up to the uh, women's department eventually. So I saw a future in women's uh, lingerie. I love it. I love it. And I suppose, so, Josie, if, if your direction wouldn't have gone the way you went with marrying Steve and the rock and roll lifestyle. I know you're a businesswoman in your own right. What do you think you'd be doing? I mean, probably pretty much the same thing I'm doing now, fashion design, interior yeah. design, you know, that's like my passion. So probably that, I don't know. I'm not really qualified for a, like a, a, a regular job. I don't know. I get fired. Job. I get fired. <laughs> but you're very, I, I know you and I know you're very entrepreneurial and very, very smart. So I, I'd say whatever you would have done would have been a success. Oh, thank you. I agree. All right, question two. That was good. That was a minute. We'll ne there's no way we'll do this in seven minutes. No one ever does, but it's fun. Sure. All right, <laughs> sounded better than seven minutes and seven questions in, se in 15 minutes. Seven minutes is good. <laughs> All right, qu question two. And you know what? I better write down how many questions because I love you guys and I'll absolutely lose my, my train of thought. All right, so question two. What is the stupidest thing you've done because someone dared you to do it? I don't want to go to jail, so I'm not answering. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 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 in my youth, yes. Um, Disclaimer. Girl, bro uh, I, I, I broke up. Well, we broke up uh, with my girlfriend, and um, and my friend was with me, and he dared me to ring the doorbell and let her mom answer while I streaked. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the 70s, you know, streaking was in. Yeah. And um, yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, where was, was that? Is that your boyfriend? <laughs> He's not my boyfriend anymore. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. JC, I'm not letting you off the hook here. What's, what's the stupidest thing you've done because someone dared you? I swear to you, I'm pleading the fifth because if I don't plead the fifth, I'm okay. going to have to. All lie. right, all right, all right, all right. That's good. That's good. All right, okay. What is the best advice you've ever been given? Do you want to answer that? The best advice. I mean, that's hard because I feel like advice yeah. resonates with you at different times in your life, like different things. I mean, there's the, I guess the usual things of like be yourself and you know, all of that. But I think one of the biggest things that probably I try to think of on a daily basis is that your outlook affects 
everything in your life. And so you have some control over your circumstances just by the way you choose to look at things. And if you don't want to do something and you go, oh, I have to do this, you make it so much worse than if you go, I get to do this. Or like, it's kind of like reframing your mind. Like everybody goes, 2020 sucks, 2020 is a yeah. wash, it's right up. I feel like you're almost cursing yourself when you yeah. say that. Yeah. So yeah. I try to look for like, you know, the good things and the blessings of 2020, like, oh, I have time to learn something new or whatever. So I think that the concept of like reframing your thoughts yes. on negative things, when I was advised about that, that really, it changed was that my young? Were you young? Yeah. 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 Were you young when you were told that and you followed through with it all, all your life? Like in your, yeah. in your early teens or something? Yeah. And it really, it's really like, you know, it really does change things because like whenever I find myself in that pattern of thinking, I try to stop it and it's, you know, it's helped me. So I think that was probably I like the best that. thing. I like that. Steve, do you want to add to that? Are you happy with that? Yeah. Um, I, I had a um, uh, really brilliant guitar teacher when I was, uh, I'd say about 14 years old, who helped me get into the performing arts uh, school. And uh, he, he was just fantastic. And he told me that um, he was a really accomplished guitar player, but never followed through as a professional. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and he, you know, he was very honest and he regretted that. And he said, and this was a time when all of the other kids in my neighborhood who were playing music, you had to, their parents were pressuring them to have, what are you gonna fall back on? You know, what are you gonna do, you know, when this music thing is, is no longer, you know, yeah, happening yeah, for you, yeah. whatever. And he said, uh, best advice was, don't have a fallback plan. Make this, you know, I guess he recognized that I had the potential to make this. And, and I was so passionate about it. He said, you, if you put all your energy into this, you can make this your life. Don't always think that you need a fallback plan because you'll never, at your first disappointment you'll go to the fall black yeah back. yeah yeah you know and i've had many disappointments in the career and you yeah. know trying to get in bands and this didn't happen that didn't happen for years yeah. um but i always felt that you know if i put all my energy into it into what i loved it would eventually happen that's bold fucking advice <laughs> yeah, that's, i know that's awesome i yeah. really I, I really like that advice and it's worked yeah yeah you've been I mean, it drove my parents nuts but yeah <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I like, I, I like, and it's funny because, you, as you know, you know, my son's a drummer. You've met Jagger a few times, and right. I stick to the same advice with him. If this is what you want, you give it everything. There is no fallback. You're a musician. So yeah. I get that. I, I think that's pretty. And he's a beast. He's so great. So he's going to make it. He's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and there's always, you know, if something doesn't work out, it, you know, life is, there are people that pick up other careers. Well, you know, I have a an uncle who, uh, 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 switched careers, went to college when he was in his 40s, and yeah. you know, and uh, so people can do amazing things later in life. There's no, you know, life is a journey, it's not 100%. It's, you know, and you have plenty of time 100%. All right, love it, love it. Question three okay, if both of you, by some inter divine intervention, knew what the lotto numbers would be, the lottery and you were told a week in advance, right, next Saturday, these are the lotto numbers, it's a $68 million win, but you had to share that with two people. Who would you share it with? The lotto numbers. Two, oh, two other people. Two other people in your life. Who would you share the lotto numbers with? Yeah, you see, he knows. He goes, <laughs> your mom and dad, which I would, yeah, you know. That's gorgeous, I like that. So yeah. that's it, your mom and dad. Yeah, I mean, and if I counted them as one, then also probably my best friend, because we have a lottery pact, actually. <laughs> we, do, we play the lottery, and we have, like, a little pact about if we win, how we're going to, if either one of us wins, we're sharing with the other. So I really wouldn't have to give her the lotto numbers, I guess, because she's already entitled to a chunk of my fortune. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. I like that. I like that, the lotto pact. All right, brilliant. Okay, <laughs> question four, question four. So little bit controversial but who is the who's the one person you've met in your life that you always wanted to meet that was that was uh that lived up to your expectations and it can be a muse or whatever and who was the one person that you met that 
didn't live up to your expectations. Ooh. And of course, you don't have to answer the last part, but you know, you can have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, it was Chris Squire from Yes. I was a huge, I was a massive Yes fan. Um, <clears throat> they were super influential in my musical out, 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 outlook, you know, saw them in 1974 at Madison Square Garden. And, and to finally meet him, he was a, <clears throat> you know, he's a big guy, larger than life took me under his wing and we had many crazy nights and we got to play music together. And he really was one of those quintessential great English rock, 70s English rock stars. And, yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, really was, he was a hell of a lot of fun and, and uh, you know, had great stories about, you know, playing with Hendrix and all the, you know, all the stuff that you would hope yes. um, would be. Um, I'm going to let you answer before I get ready. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to kind of go out of left field here. And I would have to say either Julie Newmar, who was Catwoman, or Charo. Because they are both, you know, older women, I grant you, still gorgeous. And they just radiate that, like, old Hollywood glamour. And yeah. I was like, they are goddesses. Yeah. And so that was, like, for me, I was, like, they were, like, everything I would imagine, like, like a TV star, a movie star, to be, and then some. They were just so glamorous and like gorgeous. So I'm gonna go it. with that. I love it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> and I think Tara might have been flirting with you a little bit. Well, I wasn't even mad. I was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had a plan. I brought my flamenco record to give her. So I, 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 I was very smooth. Water over, yeah. I was smooth, man. <laughs> oh, I have that record. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Who, who, are we, you? who are we dragging? Who have you met that you that you that like like I've had people say oh I met this movie star and it was he was just boring I mean you know we don't have to slam anyone but we can leave names out. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Uh. Wow. I would hate to say there, there, and and this is funny how it changes. <clears throat> so there was another musician who was very influential. Mm -hmm. I met him at a nightclub, and I had just signed to Warner Brothers Records. Well, he had a I'm not going to say his name, but he had a bad relationship with Warners. Yeah, yeah. And here I am, I'm 22 years old, all excited, and I love the records, all of this. And, and he goes, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> um, and then I, I said, well, I love this record, and I love that record you did. And he, he said, yeah, well, it was just the right combination of drugs, I guess. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like totally, I mean, I, I wore the grooves out on these. Anyway, turns out years later, I met him again under different circumstances uh, somewhere else, and he turned out to be a wonderful person. I've since seen him. So sometimes you meet somebody and they're yeah. just in a, they're going through a rough yeah. Uh, yeah. bit. But by and large, most, most people I've met uh, from the musical side have been pretty, pretty cool, you know? Mm. Um, I mean, I can't really think of anybody. That... But you're a nice guy. You're a cool guy. Both of you are cool people. It's huh. it's unusual that you'd attract someone negative. I mean, I know that we've all had negative and people we don't like around us. But... Yeah. yeah. Well, I will tell you something. When I when I the first time I spoke to Slash, whose birthday was yesterday, mm. we're outside the rehearsal, and um, <clears throat> and this is well after GNR had all their success and everything, and uh, and. Uh, I said, oh, you know, I, re I really love your guitar playing. You've done so much for guitar and, you know, a great ambassador. And he goes, yeah, you really slagged me off when I met you at the Rainbow. <laughs> and I go, I've met you before? He goes, yeah, about in the, in the late 80s or the mid 80s or something. I don't remember this at wow. all. Wow. He was, he was, he said, yeah, I was just a punk kid then. And I said, wow, you know, I said, I apologize, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hudson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Huge apology. Uh, we're, we're on great terms now. Yeah. But I felt genuinely bad about that, you know, because yeah. um, you never know, man. You might meet some, some kid now who's going to be the next super guitar player or something. And, totally. and I probably was just, you know, thinking about, well, you know, you know, girls probably. Probably <laughs> girls, you know. <laughs> That's a great story. What's yeah. that saying? Don't burn. The, may the bridges that you burn on the way up light your way on, light the way for you on the way down, or something like that. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. That's a great story. Yeah. And, and Josie, when, you're not going to mention anybody, are you? You're too nice. You know what? I, there's only one story that springs to mind, and I really don't want to drag this person because, like, no, I, don't mention the name. I was I was very young, and yeah. I met somebody that I really idolized. Yeah, a male musician. They came up to me, and I had like you know never met a musician, whatever. And I was like, How old were you? I was a teenager. I was young. Yeah. I'm going to choose not to say how young, but I was young. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I was a little naive. Let's just say. And so he came up to me and I was so excited because I wasn't thinking in the sense of like, okay, if a musician comes up to you and you're a girl, it's because they're going to try to, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. thought, oh, he wants to talk to me about music or something. <laughs> yeah. So then he um, obviously did not want to talk to me about music. I burst into tears when he <laughs> like made a sexual suggestion to me ran out me and my girlfriend drove home i threw all his cds out the window <laughs> i didn't visit him for like 15 years i cried all the way home <laughs> now that i'm like older i'm like well you know he was just being a man and he probably yeah. didn't know how young i was and that yeah. i was kind of innocent you know but yeah, yeah. at the time i was like i hate him <laughs> oh my god i love that no. and, and hasn't hasn't the world changed you certainly can't be doing any of that today or, oh yeah, you'll get me too. <laughs> yeah, you'll get me too. And they're, 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 they're closing record companies and artists are losing careers. It's just unbelievable what's going on yeah. tonight. Yeah. yeah. But, all right. Let's That's get... why I don't want to say because it would be turned into like a scandal. A hundred percent. No, 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 no. Good, good, good. No, this is good. It's great we're not mentioning names. Keeps everybody on edge because um, they don't know. All right. Okay. Question, question six. Where in the world have you been and what was it that you had your best fast food experience? The best one. The best fast, food. Fast, best fast food experience. Oh, fast food. Where were you? I mean, you live in LA. It's pretty good fast food. Yeah. Fast food. Like you we, know what? I'll tell you what I'm thinking of. Sure. We were in, where were we? Um, not Switzerland. What's the other one that starts with an S? Sweden? No. Mm? Nope. Maybe it was Switzerland. Was it McDonald's? Yeah. Oh, we, oh, yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah, we, we pulled off to the side of the road, went to a McDonald's. It was immaculate, computerized. Yeah. No, that's not what I was thinking oh, of. Oh, oh, sure. We were on tour. We were on his solo tour, and we were, like, dressed like we had played a gig that night. So we were in, like, our rocker clothes. And we went to this nice restaurant. And it oh, was one of the only... No, but it's kind of funny. We <laughs> were, it was one of the only, like, right. restaurants open in this small town. And we went... In Europe. Yeah, and they wouldn't let us in. They're like, we're closed. Uh, the whole rest, we walked in the door and the whole restaurant turned around and looked at us yeah. like, what the hell? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they were like saying that they were closed, but they were letting other people in. So I realized pretty quickly, okay, they just don't want us in here. Yeah. So they go, perhaps you would like McDonald's down the road. <laughs> oh. I was like, sir. But we went to McDonald's and it was delicious. And I don't give a fuck. We had a good time. So, <laughs> so that'll be my favorite fast food because I was I like enjoying that. it actually. Right. I was like, the hell with them. They're that's right. <laughs> should have got the pickles and thrown them against the windows. <laughs> I know, right? That would have been punk rock. <laughs> perfect. I love that. All right. That's perfect. All right. All right, last question. You've done really well. 16 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's really good. It's really good. Okay. You're walking through a forest and there's no one around. Nobody. Just you. Not good. Just Josie and Steve walking along, holding hands in the forest. And you come to this hole in the ground. And you look in and there's this white, yellowly white light coming up with a gold ladder going down. You can't see... And there's a beautiful aroma of honey, et cetera, coming up. What do you do? Do you go in or do you just keep walking? Sounds like a trap, but I'm <laughs> going in because yeah. otherwise I'd spend the rest of my life wondering. Wondering, yeah. Sounds <laughs> like a trap. Yeah. It does sound like a trap. Like if, if you were trying to trap a Josie Stevens, do that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, are you going yeah, in? Yeah, same, same. I'm, I'm a curious bastard. <laughs> okay. All right. I, and I always think there's something better over there, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or better, yeah. better yeah. under down the hole. Yeah. Okay. That's your yeah. seven questions. And I'm going to throw in a bonus question because I love you guys. A bonus <laughs> question from series one. You guys are walking along LA somewhere in LA, no one else is around and you come across a duffel bag, a Louis Vuitton duffel bag, a real one. And inside is $1 million cash in hundred dollar notes. Nobody's around, untraceable. What do you do? We've talked about this. <laughs> we turn it in. 
Yeah, because that's somebody's drug money and they're going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that's drug money, 100%. <laughs> in LA? Yeah, yeah. a duffel yeah. bag full of cash, they're gonna yeah. kill you. Yeah. Someone said to me this week, one of the, I think, um, um, Fanny, I think it was Fanny from Yarda Blonde, she said, I'd leave the money and take the the Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, so you probably fill you over the Louis, so. Yeah. yeah. So you're just... handing it back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus, yeah. If for some reason it wasn't drug money, it's still not my money. Like, if okay. I find anything, I always turn it in. He makes fun of me, but like, like I once accidentally stole an apple and I went back to the store. Like I don't, you know, yeah. I'm, good karma. Of my many crimes, stealing is not one of them. <laughs> okay, all right, good. guys. That was seven minutes and seven Mac, uh, seven questions in seven minutes. But as we know, <laughs> it was nineteen minutes. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. You guys are an absolute blast as always. My oh, pleasure, oh, Mike. Really yeah, fun. yeah. Stay safe in LA, and we'll talk to you real soon. Yeah, and love to uh, love to your boy and your he family and you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. All right, talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. -bye.